We've been teasing our mystery guest's identity all week long, and we're so excited to finally reveal who they are. Have mercy, it's John Stamos. I do. What? 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 Devil, what? did you sell your soul to? What is in the water? What is in the Greek genes? How do you just not age? I drink Rob Lowe's blood first. <laughs> By the way, totally. I was, right? at, I was at Rob Lowe's birthday party um, when I was like 10 years old, and I had my first slow dance with Emilio Estevez. Oh, me too. That's weird. <laughs> well, actually, hey, yeah. Can I say something real fast? I am, I, I got to fangirl out here. I am your biggest fan. I know we don't know each other. We haven't worked. We say hi, but I just love you. And I'm just uh, so grateful to be on the show. And I, I'm just such a huge fan of yours. And I'm, um, I saw that you were having a show. I said, they better ask me to be on there. So I'm really glad you did. Thank you. I actually think we stalked you, but I'm glad to know that we won't be in trouble for it. I have been such a fan of yours my whole life. And I actually realized that you went on General Hospital in 1982. Is that right? That's right. E.T. came out in 1982. So 1982 was a good year for us. You know, I have to tell you, my son, I have a three-year-old son, and I know you, you have two daughters, right? The, he loves E.T. He loves E.T. And I told him, and he's about four times he comes, have you talked to Gertie? Where's Gertie? Where's Gertie? And he has this book um, that, that Gertie narrates. And he was screaming the other day. And I said, what are you doing? Why are you screaming? And he says, I'm a really good screamer. And it was from you, from that the little book. Oh, my gosh. So, I remember I, making that book. It came with the little album and the booklet. Remember yeah. those? Yes, yes. That's like from our era. How did he even find that? On eBay? I thought, yeah, it was old. I think maybe his grandfather gave it to him or something, but it was so, it's so cool. And you named your son Billy after your father, Bill, right? That's right, yeah. What a, what a great tribute. I loved my dad. He was my hero. You know, when you, you know, when you, you, you have that moment where you look at your parent and you go, oh, they're, they're, they're just, you know, human. They're, they're not a superhero. I never had that with my dad. He was always a superhero to me. He was a, a great, great man. Yeah, no, I definitely did not have that with my father, but um, I was more like, oh, shoeless hippie with no job, unaccountable, and doesn't live anywhere. Perfect. Um, <laughs> but, but you know what? I do attribute my bohemian ways to him, and everything I had a problem about when I would see him occasionally, he'd say, oh, you got to kick the bag, baby. As if, what does like, that mean? Like, don't carry it with you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kick the bag, baby. I was like, gonna... said the guy who's an unaccountable father. Fine, whatever. But I, I still, I love him. He gave me so many things. I have such a, like, healthy dynamic with both my parents. Like, and I, I just, I loved reading about your dad. And one of the stories that really stuck out to me was that he had you still flipping burgers at his restaurant yeah. The first year you were in General Hospital, right. you know, m my parents really didn't give me a, 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 a blueprint for, for much in the parenting department, but they gave me plenty of blueprints for personality and creativity and artistry and all these other spiritual, soulful aspects. Kick the bag and just move on. You now, gotta kick the bag, you gotta baby. Kick the bag, baby. I think your son is in such good hands, and I just, I love the way that you guys model love. Yeah, we try. It's, it's not always easy, as you know. I mean, don't you wish they taught some of this in school instead of all the crappy math stuff you had to learn? I completely agree. I'm not dissecting a ton of frogs, but I am desperately trying to get life right. Please Crazy. talk to me about the grand scheme, Snatching Sinatra. We love highlighting podcasts, which have taken over the world. Yeah, I just, uh, you throw a stick out my front door, I'll hit six people with a podcast. We have a segment that's in honor of the new frontier. It's called The Download. Okay. So... What you said was right. It's like the most unbelievable story that has never really been told, uh, partly because Frank Sinatra Sr. didn't want it told for many, many years. This guy named Barry Keenan, um, in, in, uh, he, was, he was 20 years old, and he was at the, the lowest you know, place anyone could be at life in life. And he was parked in his car overlooking Catalina Island, and 
uh, God's voice came over the radio and said to get out of your issues. You know, he owed money. His, he owed money to his parents. He, he was in a lot of uh, debt and a lot of trouble. You need to kidnap somebody. And, and the radio wasn't even on, he says. So he, he, he's a very intelligent man. He's still around. He's 80, 81. He just turned 81. He celebrated his birthday here at my house. I think you realize that this man had mental issues. And, you know, in the 40s and 50s, they swept that under the table, you know, mental illness. So it shines a light on that. I mean, the story is so layered and it's so beautifully produced having, you know, getting the privilege to listen to a lot of podcasts. I just love the mix and the sound effects and your voice is perfect. And the story is exactly the story is so compelling. And what ends up happening to him and the, he goes to jail, but then he gets out early because of the claim of mental illness. I think this is just a very compelling tale. I can't believe it's a true story. And you have the rights to this. Yes, yeah, to him, and you know we're doing some other stuff with it, uh, uh, you know, television stuff. I was going to say this is like a TV show, content movie. There's so much here. So much. It's so, but it's and it's so layered. And you, you, you spoke of he got out. He was sentenced to life plus seventy five years. Him and the uh, two of the other guys that did it with him, but he did get out early, and he then spent fifty years uh, avoiding. Um, you know, being shot at by Frank Sinatra Sr. I mean, he talks about two or three of the hits. The last one, so it went for 50 years. Sinatra was so old on his deathbed, and then, but the hitman was so old, the last time that he was shot at, the guy, the hitman had his, uh, had him in the in the sights, and his colostomy bag broke, and he went all over the, and he, <laughs> uh, he the final thing. That's how long, <laughs> and, and the story's great. You know, I always say it's like the Marx Brothers meets the Coen Brothers, has that feel. But the podcast, being able to do it over 10 episodes, has really let us really get into his psyche and really understand why a man would do something this desperate. Well, I think this is the cliche of you cannot make this stuff up. It right, is right. riveting. You found a story that is so historically um, entrenched with a rich tapestry, and yet it's untapped. People don't know about it. So bravo for bringing it to the forefront. I think there's a lot to continue with this yes you're right well Ooh. i i i'm just so happy to have an excuse and a reason because i don't know how we've been around since 82 and not like hung out and known each other mm -hmm. but i'm it's never too late and i'm just really happy to make your acquaintance as someone who's been cheering you on my whole life well, back at you. I, 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 and I've been inspired by you. I've just watched you, you know, be a kid star. Then you overcome issues that you had to overcome. And then you come out, you know, most people don't make it past that. And you, you know, you did. I'm so glad. And I'm so glad you share your story with everybody, obviously, yeah. because it really has helped a lot of people. Flower power, all that stuff. I say we kick the bag right now and just, you know, be friends. Well, as long as you're here and putting your magic out into the world time and time again, you have big shot that everybody loves. David E. Kelly is just so genius and everybody, I mean, longevity, you just, you keep bringing your goods to the world. So please keep and doing it. And it's about gratitude, right? I yes. Know you were gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. Maybe that's the key to longevity, like being appreciative and recognizing how lucky we are and, and all the things that your dad taught you that I found out along the way, luckily. Yeah. I think it is. I think it's part of it, certainly. Because if you could, and, and it's not just about the big things, like I'm just grateful, I'm certainly grateful to be talking to you. I'm grateful for the weather today. I'm grateful for my son, you know, uh, not coughing in my face all night like he has been last year. <laughs> I wonder where he is. Do you have to, should I try to see him come up here? Because he. Oh, sure, so Billy. Hey, well, Bill, come in. Look who I'm talking to. Birdie. Come here. Come here, you. <laughs> hey, you see? Wait, wait, wait. Come here. Do you see her? Where is she? Wait, let's see. We do the speak or talk, Gertie. Hi, Billy. How are you? It's Gertie. I look a little different. Not that much. Here, come sit. Can you see Gertie? Do you know Can what you I see? love most about E.T.? What? He taught me to be kind. And he taught me that being gentle and good to each other is really everything. I think he learned that from E.T. Didn't you, Bill? And he also learned from E.T. how to scream. Well, from Gertie, really. <gasps> Billy, do you know how to scream? 
You know what? I'm just going to do one for you. Ready? One, two, three. Ah! <laughs> you hear that? We have a... Um, I, I, can you do it? <laughs> this is the quietest he's ever been since, before, since he was in his mommy's tummy. Um, the... We, you know, I have one of these these rubber figures from the ride at Universal Studios because I collect stuff like that, and we can't find it, right, Bill? Every morning he goes, Dad, did you find the the ET figurine? Well, I I I'm so glad that you like ET, Billy. It's funny, my own daughters, uh, they've seen some what they call mom movies, and yet they're they're they haven't really connected with ET yet for some reason. So thank you, Billy, because my own kids are. Not that interested in it, funny enough. He hates anything that I've been on. I mean, it, it, you know, if we're... Oh, you want to come come here and say goodbye. Come over, come sit on my lap. Oh, you can do you ever, my... Billy, do you ever watch your dad on TV? And, like, see dad dad movies and dad TV? No. Would you like, you, you like watching me on TV? No. <laughs> it Later, like... like, later they start to appreciate it, I think. But I'm glad you like E.T., and I like you very much, and I really like your father and your grandfather, who you're named after, and it is just a pleasure to be with the Stamos gentlemen. <laughs> Say bye-bye, Bill. Say but come. you know what we made outside, and you know what we picking? What? Tomatoes and, and... And you're picking tomatoes? Yeah. In the garden? Yeah. Well, happy <laughs> tomato picking, Billy. I hope they taste delicious. And thank you, Drew. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Bye, Billy. Oh, no. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, he's so beautiful. What a beautiful yeah. soul and eyes and kind. And oh, thank you. I, I'm really glad to meet him. Thanks for saying hi to him. I'm sorry that he called you Gertie, but I'm sure when I meet your kids, they'll call me Uncle Jesse and then we'll be even. By the way, I am Gertie and darn proud of it. So thank you, John Stamos. I'm so excited to make your acquaintance finally and let it not be the last time. You were everything that I would hope and, and, and thought you would be, but more. <laughs> Right back at you. And I love this new podcast, The Grand Scheme Snatching Sinatra, is out July 12th on Wondery Plus and on July 27th on all major podcast platforms. This is going to be a huge hit. You really did unearth a legendary story wrapped in amazing history, and I think everyone's going to freak out over it. Thank you, Drew. Thank you very much. And I hope I see you soon. I hope so, too. In person, hopefully, too. Thank you.